Apollo 8 was launched on December 21, 1968 at 1251 UTC from Launch Complex 39A at Cape Canaveral. Initially, Apollo 8 was planned as a D-type mission, one meant to test the lunar module in low Earth orbit. However, the lunar module was delayed, with the one for Apollo 8 arriving with many defects needing to be fixed. Instead of delaying the mission entirely, George Lowe, the head of the Apollo program office, decided to create a new type of mission, C-Prime, that would have the command and service module, the CSM, go into lunar orbit without the lunar module. Otherwise, the first trip to the moon was planned to be Apollo 10. This decision was made prior to the Soviet Zond 5 uncrewed lunar mission, but that mission certainly added a sense of urgency and convinced people that delaying might either allow the Soviets to get ahead or cause NASA to fail to fulfill John F. Kennedy's end of decade deadline. The Saturn V used for this mission was redesigned to mitigate the pogo oscillations that occurred on Apollo 6, but it was still obviously a risk to put crew on the rocket on the mission right after such problems were revealed without another uncrewed test. The Saturn V control system was also designed for particular payload masses and not tested for just the mass of the CSM, so a dummy weight of 9 tons known as the Lunar Module Test Article B or LTA-B had to be attached to the third stage of the rocket to stand in for at least part of the Lunar Module's mass. On board the mission were Commander Frank Borman, Command Module Pilot James Lovell, and Lunar Module Pilot Bill Anders. Anders retained the title of Lunar Module Pilot even though there was no Lunar Module. Initially, the crew of Apollo 8 was James McDivitt, David Scott, and Russell Swickart, but since the mission they had trained for had been to test the lunar module in low Earth orbit, and that had been moved to Apollo 9, McDivitt decided that his team should stick to what they had trained for and conduct the Apollo 9 mission instead, foregoing personal glory and a much more high-profile mission in favor of doing what was best for the program. Frank Borman's team originally included Mike Collins as command module pilot, but he needed back surgery and was replaced by Lovell. For Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong chose Collins for his team because he felt that Lovell, having already been to the moon on Apollo 8 as command module pilot, deserved the mission as commander. The crew was the first to pass through the Van Allen radiation belts, and their dosimeter showed an average skin dose of 0.16 rads, far less than the annual limit of 5 for workers set by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. This was primarily accomplished by passing through the belts quickly. The crew of Apollo 8 entered lunar orbit successfully, becoming the first humans to do so on December 24th, 1968. They took the famous Earthrise photo. It is worth noting that because the moon's rotation is locked, the Earth would not rise for an observer on the surface, and only seemed to do so because the crew was in orbit. They commemorated Christmas by reading from the book of Genesis in the most poetic moment we got from the Apollo astronauts, and departed back for Earth on Christmas Day. They splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on December 27th at 3.51 p.m. UTC. While Apollo 11 represented the fulfillment of the purpose of the Apollo program, Apollo 8 was perhaps the most significant first, as, with the crew on board, it bridged a gulf between the Earth and the Moon for the first time. The Earthrise photo is credited for increasing environmental awareness and partly inspiring Earth Day. It was also the brightest spot in one of the darkest years in American history, a daring success in a year where so much had seemed to go wrong. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Apollo 8.